Hey guys, so this is a tutorial on how to knit a sock from start to finish. Really quick, I want to go over the different parts of the sock and each of these parts will be broken up into sections throughout the video. So the first part is the brim, which is the top. This will usually be the tightest portion. And then there's the leg portion. In this one, I chose to continue the brim pattern all the way down the leg. Sometimes you'll knit a brim and then you'll do pattern or knit stitches, um, whatever your pattern calls for here. After you finish that, you're going to start um, knitting the heel. So this is split up into three different parts. First, you're going to create the heel flap, which is this portion here. So you're knitting down on one side. Then you're going to turn the heel here, which is underneath this portion right here, which turns it and makes it flat on the bottom. And then you're going to do a gusset. So you're gonna pick up the stitches along here. Once those are picked up, you'll be knitting down the sock and doing decreases along the gusset. This will create the shape. Once you do all these steps, you'll have a heel, and then you'll knit the uh, foot portion of your sock, and finally, you will knit the toe portion. I am double knitting with sock yarn for this pattern, so it becomes worsted weight. I like that sock yarn has a nylon in it. It makes it a lot more durable. I have a tutorial on how to knit with double pointed needles. You can make a heel with a small nine inch circular needle. You can also use magic loop or knitting, knitting through uh, two sets of circular needles. It's totally up to you, but double pointed needles is how I do it. So that's what I'll be demonstrating. Your stitches are gonna be divided equally onto four needles. So I'm doing 40 total, so I have 10 on each. In order to help me remember which side is the start, uh, you can tell by the tail here, but I like to put a little stitch marker in place so I know when I reach this section with a stitch marker, I'm starting my next round. I have already knit the brim and leg portion. I've just continued my brim pattern all the way down the leg. Now I'm ready to start the heel. The layout of the sock is that these first two needles is going to be the top of your foot and these second two needles are gonna be the bottom. So if you look at this sock, if we were looking at it the same, the first two needles will be here going over the top of the sock and the back two needles will go down to create the heel. The first step of your heel is the heel flap. So I am at the start of the round, I'm on needle one, and I'm gonna knit across needle one and two so we can start working the back. So I'm just going to knit normally. If you're doing a pattern, you will keep following the pattern on the top of the sock. Um, for this one, we are just doing knit stitches. So I'm going to knit all the way across to the back of the heel. So I just knit across needles one and two, and now I'm at the back part of the sock. This is where we'll, we will be creating the heel flap. What we're essentially gonna be doing is we're gonna be going back and forth to make a long flap that sticks out from the rest of the sock. So the way that this is done is in repeating rounds. So they're kind of in sets of two. First, you're gonna slip one, knit one across, and then you're gonna slip one and purl all the way across, and you'll keep going back and forth. So I will demonstrate what this looks like. So the first stitch, uh, we're gonna be knitting. So the yarn is in the back. We're gonna slip that first stitch and then we're gonna knit the next stitch. Slip that stitch purlwise with the yarn in the back. Knit, slip, knit. And we're gonna keep going across all the way to the end of the round. So you can either continue to knit on two separate needles. I personally, when I do the heel flap, I like to um, put them onto one needle. That's just personal preference. You can do whatever works for you. So I'm gonna continue the patterns. When you finish that first row, you are going to end on a knit stitch. If you didn't end on a knit stitch, the slip one knit one pattern probably got mixed up somewhere in there. So I would go back and check. Um, now that we've done that first row, what we're going to do is turn our work. We are now looking at the wrong side of the work, the side with the purl stitches on it. And now we need to knit back across. What we're gonna do is we're going to slip that first stitch purlwise with the yarn in the front. I knit continental, so I'm going to move my yarn to the back of the work. And then I'm going to purl across. So, oops, sorry, out of focus there. Purl across, so I slip that first stitch purlwise, 
and then I'm just going to purl all the way to the end of the row. If at all possible, you want to try and keep your tension as even as possible. I know for me, I um, struggle more keeping my purl stitches tight. So, you know, try to give them a little extra tug um, so that, you know, your tension is as even as possible. And that'll keep all the measurements in the sock equal. So you don't have one section that's, you know, looser or bigger than another section. I'm now coming to the end of the row and we're going to purl all the way, including the last stitch. So I've purled that last stitch. Um, for me personally, this side ends up being a little looser on the end than this side. That's totally okay. Um, it's not gonna make a big difference. Now that we have gotten in one direction, uh, slipping one and knitting one, and we've come back, uh, slipping that first stitch and purling all the way, we have done one repetition. So one back and one fourth, uh, when you get to the same place, that is one repetition. And so different patterns are different for how long you are gonna go. But we are going to do the same number of repetitions as we have stitches on the needle. So that means because I have 10 stitches, I'm gonna go back and forth 10 times. So one loop, that's one, another loop, that's two, etc. We're gonna do that 10 times. So we'll go through that one more time since we reached the end of the purl side. We're going to turn our work so the knit side is now facing us. We're going to slip that first stitch knitwise with the yarn in the back. And then we're going to knit one. Slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one, etc. We'll continue doing that all the way to the end. We are now at the end. And like I said before, you're always going to end on a knit stitch. So we have knit that stitch. Now what we're gonna do is turn our work again. Now that we're looking at the purl side, we're going to slip that first stitch purl wise with the yarn in the front, move our yarn to the back of the work. If you're knitting continental, if not, it stays in the front. And then we are going to purl all the way across. I like to try and give that first stitch a tug to keep it nice and tight. Um, I find that that's sort of the hardest part is keeping both sides even. I'm about to get to the end of the purl row going back. So purled all the way across, including that very last stitch. Now that we have reached, if I can finish this stitch, now that we have reached the end of the purl, We've knit across and we've purled back and we've now done another repetition. So now we've done a total of two repetitions. Just like before, we're gonna turn our work and we're gonna continue knitting and purling across. You will continue to repeat this pattern and you can see it creates a different texture on the back here. You'll have sort of bigger stitches and indents and that gives a different texture to the heel and it's more stable. So once you get to the number you're going to do, so in my example, we're doing 10. So I'll go knit, purl, that's one, knit, purl, that's two. I'm gonna do that 10 times since I have 10 stitches on one needle. If you have 11 stitches, you're gonna do 11, 12 stitches, 12, etc. However, we are going to end after we finish the knit row. So for the final repetition on the 10th one, instead of going back after you knit, you're gonna knit across, but you're not gonna purl. You're then going to start the uh, heel flap. So I will knit till I get there and then I will demonstrate what that looks like. I have now done nine repetitions back and forth and I am on my 10th and final repetition. Um, if you are doing a different size, you'll do more repetitions. But on the final repetition, you are going to do the same initial thing where you slip one and you knit and you slip and you knit all the way across. But instead of doing the purl side, we're instead going to start the heel turn. So essentially what you're doing is on the last row, you are doing half the repetition. So I just finished knitting across the 10th time. Normally now we would turn our work and purl back to this side. However, instead we are going to start the heel turn. To start the heel turn, the first thing that we're gonna do is flip our work so that the purl side is facing us. We are going to slip that first stitch purl-wise, and then we are going to purl halfway across our stitches. So 
for me, since I have 20 total and I did 10 repeats, I'm going to do 10. If you have more stitches, you will do half of whatever is on the total back heel, which is going to be the same as whatever you had on one needle. So I had uh, 10 stitches per needle, so I'm going to slip and then purl 10. So I've made it halfway across. I slipped that first stitch and then I purl 10 or whatever half of the amount you have. And then we're gonna start doing the heel turn. So this will go back and forth and you'll be doing the same thing just with different stitches in between. So you've made it halfway across. You're then going to purl two stitches together and then you're going to purl one. Then you will flip your work so that the right side is facing you. You are going to slip one. You're going to knit three, knit one, knit two, knit three. And this will be the same for all the sizes that you do. So you knit three and then you're going to slip, slip, knit. And knit one. We are then going to turn our work again. And now that we're going back and forth, each time we're gonna go across one further. So since we knit three, we're gonna start by slipping one and then we're going to purl four. If you lose track of how far you need to go across, what we're essentially doing is we are going to one stitch before this gap and we're gonna close that gap. So I purled four. Now I'm going to purl these two stitches together. I'm going to purl one and then I'm going to flip my work again. And each time you go up one in the number of stitches you're going across. So I, slip one stitch knit wise. I knit one, knit two, knit three, knit four, knit five. So going up one stitch, I slipped one, I knit five, and I have now reached this gap. If you lose track of where you are, just go to where the gap is. So in order to close that gap, we are going to slip, slip, and knit. And then we are going to knit one additional stitch and again, we're going to turn our work and do the same thing going in the opposite direction. We're going to slip that first stitch. Then we're going to purl until we get to the gap, which is one more than the number we knit. I have now reached this gap here. So I'm gonna purl two together. Purl two together, purl one, and then I'm gonna turn and go across. And we are going to keep doing this until there are no more stitches left on the needle. As you can see, it's already starting to create this heel turn, this kind of oval texture, and that will go around the back of your heel. So I'll finish doing these and show you what the last row looks like. I'm now reaching the edge of my heel turn. So I'm left here with one more purl two together and then that purl one at the end. So I'm going to do that and reach the end of the row. So purl two together, purl one, and turn. You are going to end the heel turn on a knit row. So you're going to do the same thing you did before. Slip that first stitch. Knit all the way until you get to the gap. All right, I have now reached that gap. I'm going to slip, slip, and then I'm going to knit. I've now gone all the way across, and for my size, I will have 12 stitches remaining. So I'll count my stitches to check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I have all the stitches I need. Um, the different number of stitches you'll end up with for different sizes will be listed in the pattern. 
If for some reason you have the wrong number of stitches, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. If you have one stitch too many, you can just knit two together at the end instead of knitting one. And if you have too few, you will make up for it in the next step. So even if this doesn't end up perfectly, um, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. It's not going to change the overall fit of your sock or anything if you're one stitch off. So we have now done the heel flap. We've done the heel turn and it's now time for us to do the gusset. So before we begin the gusset, this is what I like to do. I find that it makes it easier um, to keep knitting and to do the gusset. I like to split the stitches on this needle onto two needles. So since I have 12 stitches, 12 divide, divided by two is six. So I'm just going to slip purlwise six stitches so they're on a separate needle. Our heel is now divided in two. So we have six stitches on each needle. What we are going to do now that we have finished the heel turn is we are going to do the gusset, which starts by picking up those gusset stitches. If you flip your sock over, you can see along the edge here, because we slip stitches, these end up a little larger. So however many repeats you did, you will have that many stitches to pick up. So I did 10 repeats, so I'm gonna pick up 10 stitches. You can see on this sock here that this was the heel flap, this was the heel turn, and this is that long piece that we are looking at right here. These are the same spot. So it kind of looks like the stitches are going sideways and that's because we're gonna pick these up as we knit and then we'll decrease to get this section. The next step in the gusset is picking up the stitches. So since we had 10 repeats, we're gonna be picking up 10 stitches. I just wanna preface this by saying that if you pick up the wrong number of stitches or you miss one or you get an extra one, it's not the end of the world. We'll be making sure the stitches are even as we decrease. So don't stress too hard about, you know, making sure that it's the exact right number. I mean, do your best, but if it's not, it's totally okay. So when we turn this, we can see that we, it kind of looks like there's a row of stitches along here, but we wanna make sure that we are getting the very top stitches, the ones that come from this knit stitch. And so we're just gonna be going into each of these loops and knitting through them. So we can see that first big loop right there. So we are just going to put our needle through. We're going to wrap the yarn around to hook it, and we're gonna pull it through that stitch. We're now going to go into the next stitch here, so you can see the next little stitch put our needle through, wrap our yarn around, pick up that stitch. And we are going to keep going all the way along the side like this and we, until we have picked up all 10 stitches. We just finished picking up all those stitches. So we have a very full needle right here. This is the front of the sock. In order to get to this side to pick up these stitches, we have to knit across the front. So what I'm gonna do is just knit needles one and two so I can get to the other side. I like to make sure that I give that first stitch a nice good tug. Uh, that way we don't end up with a little gap in between the two sections. So we just finished knitting across the front of the sock. And like I mentioned earlier, um, the way that I like to remember where the front starts is by putting a stitch marker. So as I knit, I'm just going to take that put it up a little higher. And now I remember that every time I get to this needle where the stitch marker is, that's where my new round starts. We have now reached the other side where we need to pick up our stitches. Um, I find that it helps for me to sort of fold this all the way up so that I know I'm picking up the stitches along the top and not the stitches along the side. So I'm gonna look for that first stitch. And the thing is, is that these are easier to spot because they've been slipped, so they're a lot longer. So my first big stitch I have right here. So I'm gonna go in underneath that stitch, gonna wrap my yarn around and pull it through. Same as on the other side, you wanna try and make sure that first stitch, if you pull it tight, it'll help to prevent a gap. And then I'm gonna keep going along this needle. So I picked up my next one. I fold it up to see that right there we have our next stitch. I'm gonna put my needle through, wrap the yarn around, pull it through. The next stitch is right here. And I'm going to continue doing that until I pick up all 10 stitches or however many stitches you need to pick up for your size. So I just finished picking up this last stitch here that's right under that live stitch. And now that we have picked up all 10, 
What I like to do is since we need an additional needle in order to knit, we want to have it on to four separate needles. So I like to have the same number of needles on the two front and the same number of needles on the back two. So instead of um, knitting off a separate needle, I'm just going to go in and knit this next needle with the needle that you use to pick up the stitches. So now what we are looking at is, you can see it's starting to look like a sock here. So I have needle one and needle two. These are the front of the sock. Then I have needle two or needle three and needle four. So these two will each have 10 stitches or whatever amount for the size you're doing. And these right now for this size are at 16. So our goal is that we want to get all the needles to be 10. So the way we're gonna do that is by decreasing on these two needles every other round. So before I start decreasing, I need to knit to the start of the round. So I'm gonna knit to this needle. So when I start decreasing, I start at the beginning. As my marker tells me, I am now at the beginning of my round. So for these two needles on the front, the front of the sock, you are always just gonna knit them. They have the correct number of stitches. You're not gonna change them in any way. So the first thing to get to where I'm gonna decrease is I just need to knit needles one and two. I knit across the front of my sock and I'm now to the heel portion. And so we'll be decreasing one on each of these needles. The pattern will be the same the entire way. So what you're gonna do is you're going to knit that first stitch, pull it nice and tight. Then you're going to do a slip slip knit. And then you are going to knit the rest of this needle and you're going to knit needle four until you reach the last three stitches. All right, I have knit on needle four until I'm at the last three stitches. In order to do the decrease on this side, you knit two together and then you knit one. And then you are going to do an entire knit round. So you'll do a decrease round, a knit round, a decrease round, a knit round. Every time that you decrease, it will be in the same spot. So you'll continue to always knit across the front. And then on needle three, you will do a slip slip knit decrease at the beginning. And on needle four, you'll do a knit two decrease at the end. So I went ahead and knit an entire round. So all the way around. And then I knit back to here, and since we did a knit round, it's now time to do another decrease round. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to knit that first stitch. Since we're on needle three, I'm gonna do a slip slip knit. And then I'm going to knit the rest of this needle. And then I'm going to continue knitting on needle four until I reach the last three stitches. So I'm now on needle four. This is the start of the round right here. And I have reached the last three stitches. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did on the previous round. At the end, you knit two together. And then you knit one. Then you will do a knit round, a decrease round, a knit round, etc., until each of your needles has the same number of stitches on it. So these two needles right here will keep getting smaller and smaller. And you're always decreasing at the same point. If you uh, flip your sock back into sort of a more sideways normal sock position, you can see that we are now knitting in this direction. We did the heel flap, the heel turn, we picked up those stitches and we're now knitting out towards the body of the sock. What this looks like on this sock is the same here and this is where those decrease stitches are. So what you're doing is you're knitting out, you're decreasing on either side and it's going to curve the shape of the socks that it fits the rest of your foot as it goes down since this portion of your foot is small or bigger. This portion of your foot is bigger than this portion of your foot. So we're gonna keep knitting and once we have for this size 10 stitches on each needle, then we will knit the foot of the sock. So I've now done all my decreases and we are back to an even number of stitches on each needle. If for some reason you find that you have an additional stitch on one of these needles, um, it will not change the fit of the sock significantly or anything like that. Um, you know, if you're to 10 here, but you have 11 here, just do an extra decrease on that round. So you end up with the same on each needle. Once you have finished that, then we're just going to knit the foot of the sock. So 
comparatively to this sock, we have now finished this entire portion and we're gonna be knitting out here until we get to the toe. The length that you knit will vary a little bit depending on how big your feet are, but the general rule is you knit until you reach about the end of your pinky toe. So once I get there, I will demonstrate. All right, we finished the foot of the sock and we are ready to start the toe. What I did on my first pair was that I put my stitch marker in when I started the decrease for the toe so that I can just lay them side by side and I see, oh, I'm far enough, I can start my toe now. The way that I check whether or not my socks are the right length is by trying them on, seeing how they fit, and then when the sock has reached the sort of almost to the end of the pinky toe area, that's when I start the decrease. So I will show you what that looks like. So I've got my sock on and it falls back a little bit because um, I have my foot up. But what I like to do is adjust the heel um, to how I want it to fit. And then I kind of pull the yarn forward since I'll be stretching it a bit. When it gets worn, it should be tight. And I can see here that I've gotten to uh, just around the end of my pinky toe. So now I'm gonna start decreasing and it'll get tighter along the end of the foot. So yeah, a good way to tell is you can see my, my pinky toe's kind of just popping out, almost hidden. If I pull on it a little bit, it's hidden. So that's when you know it's time to start the toe. So to start off, I'm going to take my stitch marker and I'm gonna still stay on that first needle so I know where my round is. But I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that onto one of these stitches. So as I knit, I'll see where I started and I'll still know which needle is my first needle. So the way that the toe is done, this is the top and then the bottoms on the other side here, is you are doing one decrease on each needle, which is four decreases per round. You're gonna decrease here here, here, and here. So you're decreasing along the edges. If you look at this sock here, you're decreasing along the edges so it gets tighter along the toe. It creates kind of, I don't know, triangle type shape. Similar to how we did on the gusset decrease, we will be doing a decrease row, a knit row, a decrease row, a knit row, etc. So to start the row, you are going to knit one stitch and then you are going to do a slip slip knit slip slip knit and then you are going to continue knitting along the rest of needle one we are now knitting on needle two and we are going to knit to the side of the socks we're going to knit all the way down the second needle until we are three stitches from the end so now we have three stitches left on the needle we're going to knit two together and knit one. So now we finished the top of the sock and then we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom. So we are going to knit that first stitch, slip slip knit, knit the rest of needle three, and then knit until you reach the last three stitches on needle four. So we're on needle four, we're three stitches away. We're gonna do the same thing we did on the top where we knit two together and then we knit that last stitch. And since we did a decrease row, now we are going to do a knit row. So we're just gonna go all the way around with knit stitches. So I did my knit round and then I'm gonna do another decrease round. So that will be knit one, slip, slip, knit on needle one, knit all the way to the end of needle two, knit two together, knit one. On the back, you're gonna knit one, slip, slip, knit, knit all the way to the end of needle four, knit two together, knit one. Then you'll do knit row, decrease, knit row, decrease, etc. until you get down to about three stitches per needle. Um, it'll say in the pattern. And one of the things that I really like about this decrease is that you don't have to do a Kitchener stitch. Um, that's just my personal preference. I find them time consuming. Um, and so I find that this creates a really comfortable fit that kind of stays with the shape of the foot and it's not as much of a hassle to do. What this decrease ends up looking like, this is the side of the sock. Um, you have the slip slip knit and the knit two together. And so the sock comes inward and creates this edge that will be on the side of your foot. Once you get to the bottom of your toe and you have three stitches on each needle, you're gonna close it the same way you would a hat, cut a 10 inch piece of yarn, slip it through the stitches, pull it through. And I like to pull my seam on the inside. I also like to give it a little extra knot just to keep it tight. 
Um, the top can look seem like it's kind of pointy, like it looks like a triangle, but once you put them on, they shape to the toe really well. I'll show you what I mean. Ta-da! We got a finished pair of socks. We got our heel nice and shaped. This was the heel flap, the heel turn, and the gusset. We got our toes done. As you can see, they shape nicely around the foot. And now you have your very own pair of cozy socks. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions or need any help or anything. And I wish you guys very happy knitting.